Welcome back to Around the World in 80 Telescopes, a live 24-hour webcast that is part of 100 Hours of Astronomy Project for the International Year of Astronomy. You're joining us at the European Southern Observatory headquarters near Munich in Germany as we visit some of the most advanced telescopes both on and off the planet. We're staying at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center to find out about the Swift Gamma Ray Burst Explorer. But first, we have a video to watch about Swift. SWIFT is a, an extremely successful NASA satellite that's operating right now. It's named after a bird, which chases insects. Well, the SWIFT satellite doesn't chase insects, it chases gamma ray bursts, flashes of gamma rays that come randomly on the sky. And SWIFT is designed principally to look for gamma ray bursts, although it has lots of other capabilities. And gamma rays are the highest energy form of light. There's the light we see with our eyes, but there are lots of other types of light. Gamma rays are the most energetic form of light, the most powerful. Gamma rays are the part of what we call the electromagnetic spectrum, which starts in radio at very long wavelengths, goes through optical, then through x-rays, and then gamma rays are the very highest energy form of, of that type of radiation. The reason that it's important to look at the high energy gamma rays is that many objects, the most violent and some of the most interesting objects in the universe, emit most of their light in this high energy gamma ray part. And the only thing that can generate gamma rays are incredibly violent events, incredibly energetic events. And we're talking you know, stars exploding and neutron stars with uh, really strong magnetic fields and, and really exotic and, and strange objects like that. It's like a Christmas tree. It's shining and it's uh, flaring and there are eruptions every day. Gamma ray bursts being an example, something that for a brief instant of time outshines the entire rest of the universe. These are the biggest explosions in the universe. SWIFT is like a nimble small satellite that points here and there. It looks at lots of different objects. And it has not just a gamma ray instrument, but it also has an X-ray and a UV optical telescope on board. So it's a multi-wavelength observatory, but it has the virtue of being able to point rapidly around the sky. Different types of light tell us different things and are used for different things. By looking at gamma rays, we look at very high energy processes, but the same things that produce gamma rays can also produce visible light, and radio, and x-rays. And by studying all of these together, we learn more than we can learn by any one telescope or any couple of telescopes. Objects in the universe put out energy all across the electromagnetic spectrum. And to really understand how the universe was formed, how it's evolving, how the objects in it function, you need to observe over the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Five, four, three, two, one. We have ignition and we have liftoff of NASA SWIFT spacecraft on a mission to study and understand gamma ray bursts throughout the universe. Massive stars live fast, die young, and leave spinning corpses. And what we've seen today is that their afterlives are even more interesting than we had thought. On December 27, 2004, we observed the brightest flash of light ever seen in the heavens. It was so powerful that it distorted the Earth's ionosphere, and it's possibly so rare that it's been called a once-in-a-lifetime event. So just to put this into perspective, uh, these objects do not normally get this big this quickly. We're used to planting an acorn in the ground and maybe waiting 50 years for it to slowly turn into an oak tree. But this time it was like we were standing in front of the acorn and it popped up into a full tree just in the space of a few weeks. I have never seen anything like this before and I have to be honest, I, I won't be disappointed if this is the only one I ever see. We are indeed looking back in time when you look at you know, these distant objects in the universe. And since gamma rays are coming from halfway across the universe, we're looking way back in time to the early years of the universe. 
So it's really fantastic. Uh, these events are, are mind-boggling. Now let's meet our scientist from SWIFT. Hello. Hello. Hi, this could is you please... Geronimo Villanueva here. Oh, hello. Can you introduce uh, yourself again and, and tell us about your job with SWIFT? Yes, yeah, sure. I'm uh, Dr. Geronimo Villanueva. I'm a planetary scientist at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center and a guest observer with SWIFT. What does a guest observer mean, Geronimo? Yeah, it means that we do a specific science with SWIFT. Actually, SWIFT being such a broad aspect science, uh, science mission, we can do a lot of things, not only the main, the main project. Okay. Um, and tell us a little bit about, again, we're talking about a, a space telescope. So tell us a little bit more about SWIFT and why that's the perfect instrument for your guest observations. Well, SWIFT is a great, great mission because it's a multi-wavelength observatory. It means that it can observe objects with different, different eyes, in some sense. You can see in the optical, in the UV, in the x-rays, a broad range of energies. And there's, as you were before in the video, you can, you can see many, many phenomena with this. It has three instruments, uh, the BAT, which is uh, actually the main task, which is to detect gamma ray uh, outbursts, and is to detect them. And then it has two instruments, the UV optical telescope and the x-ray telescope. That once a gamma ray burst is observed, it will go directly there. And and tell our viewers a little bit why about why that's very unique to be able to see in all of these wavelengths and what what makes Swift uh, special in that case and why as an astronomer it's important for you to see in those wavelengths. Well, yeah, one of the great things about Swift is it has all these instruments in the same observatory, has gone through the same thing, so you get the the global picture at the same time. So you have a, a wealth of information at the same time, and this is, this is unique of SWIFT. So you can study gamma ray bursts in, with unprecedented uh, accuracy or precision, and the other great thing is that you're gonna also you're going to extend your science to many other objects, uh, not only gamma ray bursts and, and bright objects in, in high energy sources. Okay, and what kind of research are you doing personally? I think you're working on, on comets? Yes, I mean one of the good one of the good things about uh, Swift it has extended. I mean, it has multiple science you can do with it. I mean, one of the one of the things it's doing, for example, is doing the X-ray mapping of the whole the whole sky, and these are unique things. And in my particular contribution, is that I'm working with comets, and and uh, astonishingly, you can do great things with uh, in the high energy with such a such a cold objects. So in my case, I'm studying comets and trying to use the, the beauty of SWIFT in the multi-wavelength to study comets while they get closer to the solar system, getting closer to the sun. So what attracted you to comets in particular f for your own research? Yes, well, com comets are very interesting because they, they are testing the origin of our solar system and other, all other solar systems. So we, what, we use comets as a probe of the, our origins when they were formed. For example, you can see an image here of AP Tatel. It's a comet, and we observe with SWIFT and UV and optical. And these comets tell us about where, where do we come from, what was the origin, original conditions. So if we can learn about those, we can know about the origin of things on our planet and billion years ago. So they are like being preserved for billion years, and these ices are being exposed now, and we can detect them and see them. Okay. And uh, what are you working on today, for example? Yes, well, today I'm actually working and combining the SWIFT observations with infrared observations of uh, Comet AP Tattel. So the, the beauty of this, this, the, this instrument, this observatory, we can measure all this UV, optical, and the X-ray, and we can also do from ground base, combine it with infrared and radio. So we're going to get the global, global multi wavelength study of these comets. We'll learn a lot about the the processes happening in the comet, the physics in the comet, and we also learn about physics in the, in the universe. Not, not here, but we can learn a lot about new physics in studying comets. Okay, and in the video we, we heard about a very dramatic um, burst that was called the brightest flash ever in our heavens. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and, and how SWIFT captured that? 
Well, that was a remarkable moment, and I have to say that's, that's one of the great things about Swift. It has its capabilities.